Hey everybody, Gage here from Sharp. Excited to be here with you today to talk about different styles of finishes found on Japanese knives. There are five that we're going to talk about today. Those include the Megaki finish, Nishiji, Tsushimi, Damascus, and Kurouchi. We're going to start by talking about the Tsushimi finish, or hand hammered finish. This finish not only looks really beautiful, but it also helps food release from the blade with relative ease. Those nooks and crannies and negative spaces allow the, the food to fall away from the blade. Now, depending on the hammer used and the strength of the hammer strokes used, this pattern will vary greatly depending on the blacksmith who made the knife. Okay, next we're going to talk about the Damascus finish. Now, I am excited to get ripped apart in the comment section uh, below talking about Damascus, but in the research that I've done, uh, which pertains more to Japanese blades, the reason the Damascus finish became popular was because of uh, the steel that was used traditionally when making a Japanese katana. The steel is called uh, tamahagane and it is very rough and porous and not really a great material to use for knives until it is heated up, hammered down and folded over and over and over again until it becomes a more consistent piece of steel that can actually be forged into a usable blade. Nowadays, uh, Damascus finishes uh, don't contribute anything to the performance of the knife and oftentimes they are cladded or meaning uh, forge welded to the outside of a core steel more to provide a, a cool aesthetic to the knife rather than add any sort of uh, performance gains to the knife. Okay, next we're going to talk about the Kurouchi finish, which is also known as the bladesmith's finish. Now this uh, finish isn't applied, but rather isn't removed from the knife. So when a Japanese blacksmith heats up his steel to forge a blade, um, getting the temperature upwards of a thousand degrees, it turns the steel a black color. And rather than remove this by polishing it off, the bladesmiths choose to leave it on as it actually helps to prevent rust a little bit. Um, looks really cool and cuts down on the labor involved in making a knife. Now every blacksmith has their own secret recipe for heat treating, so every Kurouchi finish is going to be slightly different. Some are more resilient than others, um, while some may stay on for the entire life of the knife, some wear away rather quickly. Next we're going to talk about the Megaki finish, or polished. Now knives found with this finish are going to have a, a very varying degree of polish to them. Some are a little bit more hazy, while some are polished to the point of being a mirror finish uh, and one can see themselves in the blade. They're a little bit more difficult to maintain because of that high level of polish. They're going to show off scratches and other um, abrasions that happen to your knife, more so than on some of the other uh, textured patterns. One should take extra care when sharpening and wiping down these blades, making sure there's nothing abrasive in the cloth that they're using, and making sure that they're uh, using care when sharpening the knife to make sure they don't get any scratches up the side. Knives with this finish are great for slicing as there's little friction along the blade when, when, when performing those long slices, and it'll allow the user to get those really thin and consistent uh, slices that they're looking for. Now, with that being said, they aren't particularly great with food release. So, we recommend trying to find a Megaki finished knife with a more uh, convex grind to the bevel rather than a flat grind as we find that these convex grinds help food release from the blade a little bit easier. Now the last finish we're going to talk about is the Nashiji finish. This finish is meant to emulate the skin of an Asian pear and you'll find that these finishes vary greatly from blacksmith to blacksmith. This finish is great for those looking for a workhorse knife that they don't have to worry about getting scratched up and looking like crap over time as this matte finish will help to hide scratches and other imperfections on the blade um, as you continue to use it over the years. Similarly to the Tsushimi finish, that rough finish on the Nishiji knives is going to help food release from the blade with a little bit more ease than say Megaki or Damascus finish. It is also one of the finishes that is a little bit easier for the blacksmiths to achieve, similar to the Kurouchi finish, and therefore you'll see knives with a Nishiji finish in a more affordable price ranges, generally speaking. All right, well, there you have it, folks. I hope this video is insightful to you, uh, helps you choose a finish uh, that is right for you. Um, if there's anything that we didn't touch on in the video, leave a comment down below and we'll make sure to answer your questions. I hope you liked this video. If you did, make sure to leave a like, subscribe to our channel for more knife-related content, and until the next video, stay sharp!